Hey, what's going on? Doing this the old school way again. I was going to do the live stream stream on the Hard Cold channel. But <clears throat> it's hard for people to find that. I even searched too. It's kind of hard to find. <laughs> I put the link in the last video uh, to the Hard Cold. But <clears throat> whatever the case is, I'm doing it this way until I get back on doing live and I'm still trying to figure out who knocked me off but you know this is what I have to say man you you know if you have a point you don't like fine if you think somebody's lying prove me wrong and then I could take back whatever the hell I had to say it's that simple but if you can't prove me wrong and you just don't like what I have to say that means you don't have a point so, I mean, and that goes for anybody else. I mean, uh, anybody else's channel. But instead, there are a lot of people who just, if you disagree with them, you're out of here. You, you, you know, the live stream, they click you off, delete you, block you. They don't even hesitate. It's like they they have something to protect and de to defend. It's like they're paranoid. Man, if uh, everybody must agree with me or that's it. You know, I, I could run down a list of names. You know, I did that before. I think I'd probably do it again. But this one is called Beware. And it's Beware of some clues that you could tell that people are not for real. And might be working for other people on top of that. And few people like Tariq Nasheed, the M. Mitchell, who... I look back on some of her or his old videos and I say, you know what? I had seen this person before, seen their videos for a while, but I never subscribed. And at first I thought the person was thin, uh, thick skin, but then I found out I got blocked. So that's one thing to be aware of. People who are quick to block you from their channel, not because you called them names but because you challenged their information or you came with something else or because you said okay ha ha I heard what you just said I saw what you just did that tells me you're full of shit you tell them that then they have to block you they have to ban you why because money is at stake these people are asking for money you see Sarnetta he's breaking down panicking you know he hopes that uh, side of the TV awards is, is a success, which I doubt it will be. I'm sure the usual Freemasons will come through and people are looking for an excuse to come to New York. I'm sure that they'll be doing that as well. <clears throat> but that's the thing. They block you. They don't want other information out because of the money. They're, they're paranoid. You know, these people go live. They say they have jobs, but. They're always live all the time and all times a day. The only one that has a job, uh, obviously, is Tariq Nasheed, and that's hustling the public. You know? All these others, you know, they just, their job is getting that money from suckers, but they're not doing anything. Which uh, leads me to point one, which is beware of people who keep blocking you because they want that money, which is Tariq Nasheed. Now, the funny part is, I bring him up because in his latest videos, he's been talking about, he tries to come with that serious voice. Yeah, hit some money on, on the Melanated Ministries so we can fight white supremacy. That's what he said before. Now, his latest uh, excuse is, we will send it to charity. He didn't name a charity, of course, but somebody in the comment section said, Melanated Ministries is, is a charity. Oh, is that so? Who, whose charity is who's it going to char charity for? We know. So, you know, Tariq Nasheed himself is going to his money. See, if he doesn't name the charity, then that means he's not going to let you know. Here's the paper trail to show you that we donated this, this money. Because there is no charity. People who lie say... I donated to charity. I do a great things. Then you ask them the great things. Then they might say, oh man, we, 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 we helped the children out. 
you know, we we help the homeless get some new clothes. And you say, oh, man, that's fascinating. Uh, uh, well, do you have any details so I can get down with this, too? Well, I'll tell you what. You know, give me uh, some of your money to donations, and uh, I'll make sure we get get to it. Or I, I'll help you with the man that's in charge. And then they never, they never get back to you, of course. So, you know, that's how people do it. They lie. That's why you got to ask questions. When people fear questions, that's another thing to beware of. When people fear questions. <laughs> That means they're hiding something. As you can see in the comment section, people like to ask me a lot of questions. They think they can get to me. See, I'm not coming here with BS. That's why you can't BS me with your questions. But people start lying. One person talking about, yeah, I saw what you look like. You look like a light-skinned Nigerian. I mean, come on. People making up stories, just using their imagination. I mean, those people I dismiss. When you start lying, I, I got to dismiss you. But, yeah, Tariq Nasheed, man, talking about he gives to charity now because people like the keyboard musician and others have been calling the man out. Myself, too. I've been calling the man out. And um, we know what the man is doing with the money. You should know what he's doing with the money. So that's why he tried to say we're giving it to charity. First, it was to help white supremacy. Before, it was just give me some money. Then it was then once people started calling him out, then it's the, uh, you know, we got to combat white supremacy. Which, of course, he doesn't give any details on how that money is being used to combat white supremacy. And I bet you if you ask him, he said, man, we can't tell everything, man. We got to stay on cold. You know, excuses after excuses. That's the other thing you got to be aware of, too. People who have excuse after excuse after excuse. That's Tariq Nasheed. And uh, I'm giving it, a, I'm, I'm going to call out that radical, what was her name? The radical sister. That's another person. Beware. They block you. And they fear questions. They fear differing opinions. Yes, it's your channel. It's featuring whatever the hell it is that you're trying to push. But why don't you want to hear something else? If you don't want to hear something else, that means you must be hiding something. So her, the M. Mitchell, is definitely, I think she's some type of agent. You know, anybody that goes moves to Atlanta... Something's up to begin with. She's got her little house that she's proud of. You know, when black people, it doesn't take much to sell, make for black people to sell out. Shit. A chicken dinner, and I ain't joking. A chicken dinner will sell black people out. A cigarette, black people will sell out. It's a little tiny house. It doesn't take much, man. So, she keeps telling people that she's real. You know, I notice what these people do. It's like they all go to the same class of conning. They always say family. That's another thing. What's up, fam? That's another con term like the preacher, you know? It's like when Farrakhan says, Dear brothers, my most dearest, dearest sisters. And he comes with that phony smile. That's to make you let down your guard and try to reel you in. These guys are professionally trained uh, people from the white man. Freemasonry, maybe. But once you ask the wrong question, then it's no longer, hey, brothers and sisters. Then it's like, how dare you challenge me? You know, people get upset. If, <laughs> and then... They keep over-talking you, playing fake anger and all that kind of stuff just so you won't get back to the question. So that's why people like me, that's why I frustrate the hell out of people because I let them go through their routine because I already know the routine they're going to pull. Let them exhaust themselves. Then I go back <laughs> to the question. You know, I don't let them escape without giving an answer. Because when you don't want to answer, that means you're lying. Or you don't want to tell the truth. So, this is what these guys do. Uh, the Sarnettas, the, the Tariq Nasheeds, the M. Mitchells, the whoever you can think of that keep asking people for money on YouTube. This is what they do. And you tell me if I'm wrong. First, they'll ask. Then if they don't get enough, then they'll demand. 
And then if they still don't get enough, after a while, they start putting you down. If you notice, they all do that. They say, I don't need your money. I got money. I got a job. But why do you keep asking for the money if you don't need the money? The funny part is Tariq Nasheed, he doesn't, I don't know if he needs the money, but he doesn't seem to have a, a immediate use for the money. He might need it for all we know. But, um, you know, there's something else I noticed about Tariq Nasheed when he did his last show. And this is a good thing. I like the way you two, when they do the live shows, they have the comments up again because those are needed because sometimes before, you know, people will make comments while they're uh, doing their live uh, show. And you're like, damn, who are they talking about? Now we can see it. That's a good feature because now they can't erase things. Deleting comments now doesn't even do any good because it's up there. Once it's up there, it's up there. So you can forget that. But I noticed when Tariq Nasheed was get, getting donations in his last video. I could be wrong. But I noticed he was uh, typing in. Then when he was typing in, donations would appear. I'm thinking to myself, I think my man is getting himself donations to get the ball rolling. You know, so other people will be encouraged to donate. Just like the Nation of Islam does. At the end of the sermon, anybody wants to donate right now. Anybody got a thousand dollars? Five hundred? A hundred? Ten? I got a hundred? This brother right here, who just happens to be dressed up as a Nation of Islam member, he has a hundred dollars right here. They try to get everybody else to feel guilty and say, oh shit. This man donating, I don't want to be seem cheap. I might as well donate. That's how they do it. It's all church. It's all uh, related. And these people are all agents. So you got to beware of these kind of people. And you also have to beware of the people who say, fam, what's up, fam? They greet you as fam. At the same time. You have to beware of the people who are always referring to people as niggas. Because like the fake rappers out here, they use the word nigga to appear hard, you know, to appear hood. And that's what these guys on, on these uh, YouTube shows, that's what they do. They want you to, you know, they're agents, but they want to sound convincing. So they say nigga all the time. Motherfuckers. You, if you notice with certain people, especially like people like Young Pharaoh. Yeah, he sounds like a, a woman anyways, really, truth be told. Yeah, what's up? What's happening, bitch? Catch me outside, bitch. Nigga. Motherfucker. Bitch. I mean, what kind of man is always calling people bitches all the time? That was never in my vocab except when I was calling women bitches earlier in my life, but... And I used to refer to other males as bitches earlier in my life, but shit, once I got to around 19, I stopped calling men bitches altogether because it didn't make any sense. But that's what young Pharaoh and, and hate to say too, but Seti, you know, they be say, you know, they like saying uh, after every other sentence, yeah, nigga, bitch, motherfucker. I mean, <laughs> I, I, that's supposed to sound, I guess, more engaging to the uh, urban crowd, I guess. You know, it's supposed to make them seem real. That's why I, you don't hear me saying a lot of that stuff, because I want to cut through the BS. There's no need for all that craziness. Now, Sarah Sutton said he, he said he, he has the greatest scholarship in the world. See, the way I do my thing. I do my thing so I could tiptoe in, battle ghetto scholars, take them out. Battle university scholars, take them out. And unlike these guys, I have battled university scholars and I have taken them out. I know somebody's going to be saying, where's the video? Where's the audio? I don't have it. You must be lying. I'm not lying. 
but I have the experience. That's why you see nobody has ever taken me out. Experience. See, I can roll with either crowd. That's the thing. They can only roll with one crowd. That's why I saw another, and then they, the only doctors they have on is these underground crazy doctors, man. I mean, I, I don't know where these people come from, man. There's <laughs> always some person who calls themselves a doctor, even if they really do have a PhD. I don't know where the, what university they got it from. But if you look on the internet, there are a whole bunch of low-down universities that's way down on the total pole, totem pole, not even on the charts. You can get you a doctorate degree. And, shit, I really advise, hey, man, people should do it. You can get you one. But it's what you do with it afterwards. And, you know, that, that's, that's, that's what it is. That's why if it's not in engineering or the sciences or something, I mean, you're not really going to go far. you got to make your own career. That's why these guys are either speakers, writing a book, or talking a whole bunch of craziness, you know, to, to get some attention. You know, and they all have the same routine, you know what I mean? So, you know, you got to have to beware, you got to listen to the language. You know, catch them. People who want to shut you down or shut down any talk other than what they're talking, these are people with a problem. These are people who have agendas. So when I saw that M. Mitchell start to put down the people. And they always say, hey, we don't need your money. We don't want your money. But M. Mitchell in particular, I noticed her scheme. She'll come on. She's not getting any more donations anymore, too much anymore. So she's been doing like 15 minute to 30 minute uh, live things, live uh, shows. Then she'll cut it down, come back again live. But I noticed because I thumbed down one of her uh, 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 videos that she was doing live. And I noticed that the thumbs down was almost as much as the thumbs up, as the likes. And then she's like, well, I'm about to get out. I said, oh, I see what it is. Because I saw that meter go once I hit that next one. I think it was at 9, 11 likes, 9 dislikes. She's like, okay, I'm out, family. Then she cut it off real quick. And I said, ah, oh, I think I see what's going on now. <laughs> I see that she didn't want the, she want the likes to stay positive. And she didn't want the uh, thumbs down. To uh, overpower the video, I guess. That's the thing. I think these people know more about YouTube, what pays and what have you, than I do. Because I don't know. But I notice one thing. Everybody that goes live, you don't hear it with me, though. And you don't hear it with some people. But everybody that goes live, what's the first thing that they always say? Welcome, family. Everybody's in the building, family. Yeah. Hit those like buttons. Hit those likes. Subscribe. Likes. We got a thousand people watching. Only ten people liking. Nah, man. That don't make sense. You see Sarnet to do it too. Hey, I'm withholding the video. You don't hit those. If I don't get a hundred likes, I'm withholding the video. I got to look into, into it and see what the likes are. Some people say, hey, hit the like button so this video can be found. But if people are watching it, it's already found. Because I remember when Tommy Sotomayor, he went live. I forgot what he was showing. He was showing some live sporting event. I think it was the Super Bowl or some playoff game. He kept saying, hit the like button so everybody could see the video. I got to look into it, man. I got I to gotta see what's up with this like stuff. And why it's so important to a lot of these people who go live. So that's what the end mention was doing. Hit the likes, hit the likes. So I know that you know that how that goes. So those are things to look out for. Because that goes to show that they're not coming out to say what they have to say. And let the video fall where it may. Now don't get me wrong, you got to promote what you got to promote. So people can see it. But when people are worried about likes, subs, and and... Donations and all that kind of stuff that gives you an idea, and they put down the people, get your idea what they're all about. 
you know, that's why you don't really see me getting into that. That's why I, I don't really measure the likes. I don't measure the subs, even though, don't get me wrong, I look at them to see if there's improvement and all that kind of stuff. But that's why I took off the uh, sub count because people used to, haters and true haters, used to come on and say, um, oh, you ain't even got that many subs. I had, a, I had a good amount, though. I got a good amount now. But, um, you know, I don't want people to count the subs. Cause I'm, I'm not really counting the subs, truth be told. And I'm not counting the likes, even though I thank the people who do like it every video immediately so but you know i don't demand nothing but when these people demand something you gotta beware you gotta ask yourself why are these people arrogant enough to put down their viewers the demand money demand likes withhold videos and saying well i ain't getting you nothing until you give me some likes you know and then you got some other people hey we gotta have uh thousand people in the video once there's a thousand people uh, watching the video then i'll do this i'll do that and remember sign that he used to say donate we need at least 200 dollars tonight donate 200 then we can move on to the next level so i mean you have to beware and um unfortunately there's too many of these people out there but, like I always say, ask questions. You ask questions. There should be no wrong question for anyone. You know, except, you know, when's the last time you had sex or, or have you ever eaten somebody out? All, all that kind of stuff. You know, quite, you know, those are the wrong kinds of questions that's asked. But, um, but about what people are doing, how they present themselves, what the, the claims that the people made. Any kind of question pertaining to those things, people should be able to ask. But once people start acting funny, acting like, man, how dare you ask me a question? Then you got to ask, why are these people doing this and who, wh wh what point are they trying to serve? So, you know, that's what pisses me off. Because I, I've been noticing the trend with a lot of these people. It's the same thing with... Groups, Nation of Islam, Church, Al Sharpton, all these type of guys, man, they do the same routine. It's brainwashing tactics. You know, that's why I did a show on that. I got to put up the other parts because it's brainwashing tactics. You know, they get what they get out of you. It's like, um, it's like rape in a, in a sense. You know, the way pimps, uh, serial killers, serial rapists, and other people, the way they will hit people, hit women in particular, beat them, rape them, to traumatize them even further, make them feel dirty so they'll go out there and uh, won't care about themselves. So they'll say, okay, well, I just prostitute myself because I'm worthless now. This guy just violated me. I, don't, I, I still wonder where pimps learn that technique I really wonder that I wonder if they were trained or if it's just their mindset that just made them come up with that but that's a proven psychological terror technique to uh, brainwash people so to speak women in particular I mean you think about it that happens in prison with men They'll get beaten, they'll get raped, then they might get a gift, because that's what pimps do. Because, like I said, I was reading the book with Ike Turner, Tina Turner, and that's what he did a lot. Ike Turner beat Tina Turner, then rape her afterwards. People say the rape in the movie didn't happen. Yeah, it may not happen like that, but it, it did happen. I say, yeah, this is the same psychological terror that the pimps use, and this is what serial killers do. And I think this is what these people on YouTube do to the people. And this is what the church does. They give you, you give them money. Then they abuse you. And I think that abuse, verbal abuse, you know, like they try to play you. Whether they put you down or they say, you know what? 
you've given the money to God. Now, God has told me to tell you that I need a $65 million jet. I need you to reach into your pockets now and write a check. And some people do it. That's abuse. That's taking you for granted. And what they're doing, it's because it's also a test. They said, okay, we got these people to come out of their pockets. Now I'm going to see how dedicated they are, how much I got them under control. So that's why they'll put you down and then ask you for some more. If you don't give them any more, they know that they, they're not effective. If you give them more, then they know they can get even more from you, from your ass, because they know, damn, I just put them down, abused them, called them stupid, all this and all that. And they still gave me more. That's why you have a lot of comments, real or phony, for Umar Johnson, Tariq Nasheed, you see in the comment section, somebody wrote, Tariq Nasheed is our leader. I don't give a damn what nobody says. You know, I just had to laugh to that one because I'm like, come on, that sounds so crazy. But people will put the phony comments just to make it look like these guys have a lot of support. And, um, you know, this is what these guys do. That's, that's what it's all about. You know? So, my advice to people is to beware, stop being played. But people, see, the, see this is the thing with the church when they do this experiment. And that's where these people get these techniques, these brainwashing techniques. Because you think about it, when church began, they had to figure out how to get the money from the people. You notice how churches rarely ask for help. They might ask for help if we're having a food drive or some type of something where they need some manpower, some show or something like that. They always want people to do shit for free. But when you need the church, uh, here's this uh, organization, man, they hand out stuff. Go down there and go get it. See if they'll give it to you. Tell them I sent you. Why, do you, why would you have to do that? How come you don't give to the people like they gave to you? Because that's how that's not what it's about. And unfortunately, a lot of people, parishioners, they are not wise enough to understand this. Like I always say, as soon as churches are empty on Sunday or near empty, and they're only collecting a hundred dollars a week, you could bet you they'll be going out of business and changing their tune. They're not going to worry about God then. The reason why there's so many churches is because it's people giving money. It's all about money. That's why when you run into somebody, I usually run into some people I knew from years ago. And they're like, yeah, here's my card, man. Come to my church. I'm like, why are you talking about coming, coming to church, man? I mean, nobody asked to go to church. Nobody was even thinking about that. But they want you to go to the church so that they can get the money. That's what it's all about. So, you know, it's just crazy. But the Nation of Islam, they do it to you too. And they, they learn things from the church and they all learn it from the Freemasonry. But these people on YouTube, the nerve of them to get money, then demand money. That's why the M. Mitchell was saying, people keep saying, I don't have a job. I have a job. I work from, what is it, 6 to 3? Yeah, I remembered it. <laughs> 6 to 3, and um, I don't need your money. Why well, you keep asking for it? Why, why, why do you uh, want it then? They don't give it back. They don't refund it. They take it. And they're not doing anything with the money. So that's the thing. Tariq Nasheed, he entrapped himself. And I know he's listening to me and others. I know he's definitely listening to the keyboard musician. Because he keeps switching up everything. Because I said, listen, this man committed to fighting white supremacy with the money now. So now, before he just said, give me the money. There was no commitment, give me the money before, he, or he would just say, hey, 
got this new documentary. He's already setting people up for the Hidden Colors 5. He's like, yeah, Hidden Colors 5, I think that's going to be in the works. We're going to be working on that now. I think Keyboard Musician, musician was right that my man does p- probably uh, hit those things, uh, put those things together <laughs> well before he starts uh, brainwashing. He, I admit Tariq Nasheed is a master of the brainwashing. He starts dropping the seeds, the, uh, you know, starting to act like he's not really getting to it. Then after a while, he springs it on you. Slow burn stuff, you know. But people give him money. But like I said, if you watch his last video and start watching a lot of his videos, listen to him type in and watch him type in on the keyboard. Now you think about it. When he had that ism robot. A lot of times he would type so fucking fast. I'm like, damn, I ain't even see my man. How, how's he making that robot say that? Then I would catch him and I said, oh, OK, I see. So my man types pretty fast, apparently. So watch it. You think I'm lying because I caught it once. I said, damn, every time this man typing, that's when the donations are coming through. So (laughs) that's how they got to get the ball rolling, man. But like I said, my man has committed himself now to where that money has to go. So if you don't see the results, knowing a guy like a slick dude like Nashi, he probably set up uh, an actual charity if he hasn't done that so far. And just say, hey, man, I just donated the money to uh, Playboy uh, Foundation, you know, <laughs> and uh, then you find out Playboy Foundations is run by Mad Ism uh, 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 Public Advocacy Group. Then you look further and you find that uh, the president is uh, Peanut uh, Nasheed or <laughs> something like that. You know, you just keep digging deeper in the layers of the onion. And you'll find it with these guys. Tariq Nasheed is a slick bastard. But people like him. You know, the man is entertaining for a comedian on the comedic level. But as far as that mink slide level, (laughs) now he's talking about he's coming out with an album with a slow song attached. Uh, I I can't wait to hear it. Tariq Nasheed sing a slow song. <laughs> uh, another thing, since I'm on the guy, you know, the guy claimed to be a pimp. He said, uh, Peanut told him that she loved him. I guess that's supposed to be a pimp thing. He, he was talking about love and all that bullshit. But let's get real. You know, Peanut is a little bit different so to speak i'm not even gonna try to put the woman down but i noticed that she's a little bit different he obviously picked her because she was mixed or at least lighter than his ass and because she was crazy about him and he realized he had a sucker i I know people like that man they'll if a woman is a little bit slow you know they'll they'll say fuck it i'll compromise on that as long as i get somebody who could do my every bidding so to re- now she was a real pimp. You know, my man would have a top of the line looking woman, whatever that is to him. And uh, he'd have her doing the cooking, getting him a drink. But he can't do that with a high maintenance woman. So that's why he went with a low maintenance woman. But Peanut seems cool. She seems cooler than him. But, um, you know, he's just using that woman, of course, for his image. But, you know, we need to be wary, man. But unfortunately, a lot of people out here, they're not be wearing because <laughs> they're still giving money. Now, like I said, Tariq Nashi, the evidence is there in his latest video as of this recording. Forgot what he uh, called the video, but it's clear that he gave himself some donations. Because you know he has many troll accounts, many. And Mitchell, I don't know if her subs are real or not. Because she doesn't get a lot of live uh, view viewers, uh, given the uh, the amount of subs that she has. That's another thing you got to look at, too, because I see a lot of people like me. I don't have 30,000 subs, but I get a decent amount of viewers when I go live. And a, and a lot of views when I put a video up. 
But these people that have 30,000 subs, I mean, they're not getting many people going live and they're not getting too many regular views, which I think is kind of odd. You know, now I'll say this to Tariq Nasheed, though. He does have a whole lot of views when he goes live, though. And his subs in comparison to his views are kind of low. But he does have a lot of uh, live activity, though. I don't think you could fake the live activity. But, yeah, and Mitchell's not getting donations, Radical Sister. I, I swear to you, man, sometimes I don't know where people are going. She's stuck on the Fu Fukushima thing. Oh, yeah, the main reason I made this damn video, man. Damn. So that's why I should have written down my list. The main reason I made the video is because you have to beware of black people who sound pro-black or pro-African, which are two different things, by the way, because I'm pro-black. I'm not pro-African and I'm not Afrocentric, but people keep trying to because, you know, you see people in the comment section. They keep trying to think that I'm an Afrocentric just because I talk about black people. I'm pro-black. That's why I include anybody who's black is black. Now, who anybody that the white man says is, is black or is not black. The white man is just messing with your mind when he does that. You know when the hell somebody's black and when they're not just by looking at them. I just went in the store the other day. I seen these two Indi East Indians. And I only knew that they were East Indians or from around that area because their hair was straight. Black. Not dark brown. Black like a Sudanese almost. And it was black in skin, not not brown skin. I said, damn. That's black. You can't tell me they're not black, but some people want you to think, oh, they're not black. Now, if Indians all had Afros again, nobody would ever question it. But yet, they still want to, uh, they're like to the abstain from people in the South Pacific, you know, because they're not as dark, but they have Afros. <laughs> but yeah man you gotta you gotta beware man people who talk that afrocentric that pro black oh, this fucking alarm going off yeah but this pro black stuff and then when you dig deeper behind what they're talking about so this is how you know that they have to be tricking you on purpose because they would talk, some people go crazy and they start talking this uh, African stuff. We, need, we must go back to Africa. We must go back to our African spirituality. We must have an African-based education system. You ask them, what the fuck is that? <laughs> They don't have an answer. They just come up with some more BS. Going back to our ancestors. Like people like me always say, Africans have a ton of different cultures and languages. Which one is it? Then when you ask them, some of them say, we need to go back to Africa. We need to separate from the white man. Let's go to Africa. I always ask the question, if you really want to go, why are you screaming and yelling to somebody else to go <laughs> instead of you just packing your bags and going? Why are you waiting for somebody else to do it first? Just go. You go, then you get there, you make videos, you tell us how it is, and influence other people to go. It's just like when black people were told and influenced to go to Atlanta as the place to be for black people. We know how that turned out. <laughs> but my point is... People packed up. They demonstrated it. They went. Other people said, okay, I see. They went. Must be something to it. So let me get out there too. Then you see Atlanta uh, music acts coming out left and right. You're like, shit, I might as well get down there. Then I guess you see the other side of Atlanta that seems to coincide with Hollywood. Then some people are like, nah, hell with this. Let me get the hell out of here. Because I know I'm not going to Atlanta. Shit. <laughs> no reason for me to go to Atlanta, but I get tired of these Afrocentric types, man. I keep talking about Africa. You're brainwashed into thinking this African stuff. 
because if you really felt that you wanted to go there, you would go there. Just like when I had that so-called round table with Sarnetta. It wasn't disrespectful because, like I say, man, as soon as you start sounding in a different way, they, they want to cut you off. But um, made sure I stayed on there as long as possible. Now, this is what they said. I, I kept asking them. Hey, man, this Egyptian stuff is cool. But don't you think it'd be better served if you went to Egypt and Sudan and Africa where that culture took place at and preach it to the black people over there? You notice how Sarnetta was kind of quiet on that, didn't really give me a straight answer because that's not their intent. They don't want to tell it to the real people because they're, they're preaching Freemasonry, that's why. Because if they were serious, they would go to Egypt. They would go to Sudan and say, fuck Islam. Let's get back to Amun Ra. But see, when, and the reason why I talk about the Freemasonry is because that's the white man's thing. He's in control of it. I don't want to hear about thousands of years ago when the black man was in control. The black man is not in control. The Freemasonry you are promoting is the white man's Freemasonry, so you're a proxy of white power. The white power, the so-called white supremacy that these guys keep talking about. That's why you got to look deeper and see who the Freemason is, because then that'll let you know what their ultimate loyalty is. That's the bottom line with that. You know, so, you know, these guys, you have to be aware and I didn't even tell you what you have to be aware of, ultimately. You have to be aware of these pro-blacks, these Afrocentrics. When they keep talking motherland, Africa this, it sounds good to some people who are looking for an identity. Who are looking for a sense of belonging. But the truth is, when you talk that African talk, you're not really specific about anything in particular. It's just Africa. You know, it's not really saying anything. It's like somebody saying, hey man, I'm from Cali. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool, man. Uh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, I've been out to San Francisco. No, I'm not from there. Uh, where you from? From L.A.? Nah. Where are you from? I'm from Cali. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what is Cali? Uh, that's California. That's the state, man. Okay, what part are you from? The west side. Okay. Is that the coast or is that uh, by Utah? I mean, what, what side are you from, man? The west coast of California, brother. When well, there's only one coast. That's it. That's the kind of talk you have with these Afrocentrics and these pro-African people. You try to say, pinpoint a place, and they might say, okay, well, I know a family that in the Bay Area, and then some in Anaheim. But that doesn't tell you anything. Where are you from? That's the question. You ask Afrocentrics, where are we from? They only point to the countries that speak English, Ghana and Nigeria. They never point to the countries where you don't, where they don't speak English because number one, they have deducted that, hey, the French uh, West Africa, we can't claim that because obviously we don't speak French. So they just go with the ones that spoke English or the ones that the British ruled from West Africa. Then you have people who will say, oh, some of us came from South Africa. Some of us came from uh, Angola. Well, I mean, come on, man. We, we got to stop this BS. We, is it West Africa? I mean, what is it, man? Come on. Then the more I keep looking at black people, the more I keep seeing something else. I was watching this video with Pimp C's ex-wife or widow. Looking at her face and the flatness of her face and her eyes. I'm like, man, that's not African, man. Looking at Pimp C's face. I'm like, that's not African. Looking at Tina Turner. Same type of face. Same trend. I'm sure we've seen many blacks with that Mongol look. There has to be that Native American activity going on. Damn sure it's an African. I know some Africans have that chinky eyes, but they, their look is different. 
like this radical soul sister. I mean, radical sister. <laughs> she had a little panel. There was one guy on the panel. I noticed his lips were pretty big. That's, and his facial structure was different. I said, this guy is not one of us. I could tell. Then he, he obviously said he was a Haitian. Now, if this is supposed to be a panel about black Americans, what we're supposed to be doing, why are these Caribbeans always getting involved, man? I mean, come on. Something is wrong. So, you got to beware, man. You got to beware of these people. The main point I was trying to make, which, you know, I got a tendency to run on with the point. The main point I was trying to make was beware of these Afrocentrics, these pro-blacks who talk that African stuff, wear the African garb, uh, get themselves a Egyptian name or some other kind of Punte Ipuande name or something, <laughs> you know, something crazy. And if they didn't change that shit legally, they're bullshitting. Same thing for those Israelites. Um, that sounds good to people who want to hear it. But see, then they always slip up. And the slip up is what? And, and you got to ask yourself, how come they always slip up in order for you to hear it? And how come they seem to hide it as opposed to accentuate it like they do Africa? And what that is, is they start talking about all people. See, they, they, they beat you over the head with black people, my people, whether they say their they're people's Native American black people or African black people or what have you. That's what they say. They call you fam. But then they slip up and say, I care about all people. You can't be pro-black or pro-African and say you care about all. If that's the case, talk about all. Don't give us this African bullshit. And if you're talking about white devils, as some people talk about, stick to that. You can't call white people the devil on one hand and say that they're devils and their time is up, as they keep saying. I don't like when people say that either. Their time is up. I mean, first of all, you're not God, so you don't know what the time is. And how you know that time is up? I don't want to hear from no book. I don't want to hear from no, from no uh, crazy uh, Dr. York type of guy. Nobody knows what the hell. To, you can only get a guess at the trending. But it doesn't look like their time is up right now. That's for damn sure. Their time will eventually be up. And that's the only thing people are going by. They're like, well, it's been about 500 years, so their time should be up. And it might be the way things are going, but I see things going with the Chinese and the Indians. Because they're really getting busy. But don't say, the, don't say these things. Don't say their time is up. They're devils. They're, they're crackers. But then on the other hand, you're like, I care about all people. That's how you catch them slipping. And no matter if they talk for five years about a particular topic, that one word unravels everything that they've been saying. All people. Now, when they say, I care about all people, what they're now saying is, I don't exclusively give a damn about my people. And they're also saying, well, I might as well cater to all people since I'm out for the money. And maybe all people might give me some money. It's like that guy Mandela Khan on that TRS show. People were listening to him. I was listening to him. He kept on talking, stressing this African shit. And you know how some people say the this is Africa right here in the United States. This is West Africa. But these people never explain themselves when they say that. And I hate when people come with some off the wall shit and then they, they don't want to explain it. And they talk about the red, black, and green. But then when you ask them questions, then he gets slick. He'll say, I don't care if you're, what's that saying? He says, he says, I don't care if you're red, black, 
green, yellow, gay, straight, or alike. Something, something to that, to that effect. He slips into gay, slips into white, but he stresses Africa. Then when you press him on it, he starts giggling. And you're like, okay, why are you giggling? Why are you taking offense to the fact that you said what you said? And I'm just trying to stress it. That means you're not trying to stress it, but you had to say it. You know, who, who are you saying it for? That's the question. But you don't need the answer from them because once they say all, and including gays, including everybody, then you know what they're all about. They're all about that bullshit. Because they're not really for African or black or what have you. So you can't trust people who say all. You got to be aware of people who say all. Because they're lying. You know, like I said, with the radical soul sister, she. She will say uh, she call white people devils. But then come back and say, I'm for all people. I'm like, and you're supposed to be in the nation of Islam. I'm like, well, how the hell are you supposed to be for all people if you say the white man is the devil? Doesn't make sense. Maybe she is following the nation of Islam and following uh, what Louis Farrakhan has uh, uh, set forth, you know? Maybe that's what it is. But, you know, these people are confused and they're bullshitting us. And I damn sure don't want to go into people like Poppy. And how they keep bullshitting. But these are agents, man. That's what they are. Brainwashing agents. First, they want the money. The AdSense is one thing. If you can get some big donations, even better. But get them to commit to what those donations are going for. And watch things fall apart. See, Tariq, like I said, Tariq Nasheed. He fucked up because now he has committed to giving it first. Like I said, first it was about his uh, projects, for-profit projects, I I might add. Then he said, we got to fight white supremacy with the money. Then once I called that out, (laughs) and other people did too, then all of a sudden, he's like, damn. Yeah, that doesn't sound good now that I mention, now that I think about it. So he's like, okay, let's go into charity. But you got to be specific and it better not be a charity that you're affiliated with because that's how rich people do. They set up charities and then they get people to donate to them, friends, other people in the world that they're in. Donate some money to charity. Give 10% of it to the uh, cause. Keep the rest. That's how it's done. If they're not doing that, they're pushing their cocaine. That's how it's done. But um, you got to be aware. And on that note, we're at 53 minutes. I think I'm about to do it like that and end it like this. <laughs>